Good morning. I want to thank all of you again uh, covering this and joining us for uh, this update so we can get all of the information, relevant information that we have out to the people of Jacksonville. Uh, we're receiving a number of questions reserve, uh, regarding the executive order that I put in place as it relates to job duties and job functions. Again, to restate it, uh, it's very simple. The order states that if an employee can, can work from home, can perform their job duties from home, uh, the employer should allow them to do that. Uh, we are getting some complaints, uh, and so my administration members and my team are cataloging those complaints and determining how we can follow up. Uh, just because a complaint comes in doesn't necessarily mean that the employer is not complying. Uh, for example, I'm told one of the complaints that we received was that uh, an individual that works in a packaging distribution center uh, wants to do their job duties from home. You clearly can't do that from home. So my look, my ask is, as I said yesterday, uh, for employers and employees to be reasonable with each other and come to an agreement uh, and figure out who can do their job duties from home and let them. And if they can't, uh, in the workplace to remain six feet apart. Uh, I mentioned that there are actions that, that I can take that I, that to enforce this. Uh, we don't want to end up there. Uh, we just want everybody to take a deep breath, work together uh, to make this happen so that we don't spread this disease and take care of each other. I want you to remember the virus doesn't spread. We spread the virus. I know these times are uncertain, trying and stressful times for many, especially in including local businesses. So I encourage you to support them, buy gift cards, uh, order takeout, do whatever it is you can to support our local, specifically our local small businesses. Testing update. Um, so far, we've tested approximately 1,500 individuals at both Lot J and Prime Osborne testing locations. The federal testing site at Lot J will continue to open at 9 a.m. daily and operate until 5 p.m. or as supplies last. The Prime Osborne location will operate 11 a.m. to 7 p.m. for those Duval County residents who have been pre-screened and given an appointment through Telescope Health website or the mobile app. Uh, this morning, I had a call with our local hospital, all the leadership of the local hospitals. It's a, it's a recurring call and conversation we have. Our hospitals remain in good shape this morning and are currently not at capacity. I would also add that in, in our conversations, what I've learned is that the collaboration that we have here in Duval County uh, and even the surrounding area uh, with the hospitals is it's something that's pretty special. Uh, and here's why that's important, because instead of these hospitals operating in a silo and looking at their capacity and what they can handle, they're all talking and sharing to make sure they have the same information. So as, uh, as admissions rise, as it relates to the coronavirus, uh, they can collaborate and make sure that the beds are, are put to their highest and best use and they're sharing information. The federal field hospital is slated by federal and state officials to be located at the Prime Osborne Center. I want to reiterate, this is only a precaution in the event that uh, the beds fill up at our local hospitals. Uh, yesterday, I had asked for folks to be mindful of their mental health, uh, to take care of themselves. Uh, I want to say again, uh, if you're at home, which we hope many of you are, uh, isolating, uh, get a routine, get up, uh, get dressed, have some things and functions you're gonna do that day. Uh, and uh, last night I'd asked folks at 7 p.m. to pick up the phone and call somebody, to listen to them, to share back with them, to talk about anything but COVID-19. And uh, I did it. I called my mom last night at seven o'clock. I'm gonna call somebody else tonight at seven o'clock. May call more than one person. And I saw some of the feedback on social media uh, or people were calling and talking to people that maybe they haven't talked to in a while and they were sharing uh, some of those stories. I think those are important. Those are small things that are important to do in these times. So I'd ask you again to join it's a, those of us in our city at seven o'clock tonight, pick up the phone and call somebody, listen to them, share with them, no COVID-19 conversation.
Before we go to questions, I want to just reiterate that we are all in this together. Uh, and I, I cannot express the importance again of social distancing, of washing your hands. Uh, if you cough or sneeze, to cover it uh, with your arm uh, and to only go out uh, when necessary. Groceries, supplies, if you can have your groceries delivered in your trunk, curbside, I would encourage you to do that. Uh, no need, should not be traveling to parties in people's homes and big block parties. The only way we stop this is to uh, stop spreading it amongst ourselves. So with that, I'll happy to take questions. We've got, uh, I've got the sheriff's office, the EOC, and the fire chief on this call as well. Jim Pickett. Mayor, I guess a little bit uh, since a lot of businesses have shut down and we're not seeing a lot of activity with uh, city government, there's been concern from council members about them not being informed as to what exactly is happening. How is Jacksonville running? We've got some big issues out there that have now been put on the back burner. What's happening with that? Well, I do know that uh, we are, my team is working with trying to get uh, the ability for us and comply with Sunshine Law and everything to get me and the council members together. Uh, that was scheduled to happen, I believe, yesterday, but it, 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 they found a legal issue they have to work through to make sure that we can do. So we're working on getting me and the council members together virtually uh, and comply with state law so we can talk about how to get back to doing some of the business that's important to Jacksonville. But look, day-to-day -day stuff, uh, garbage is being picked up, uh, critical infrastructure still being worked on, uh, the things that need to, 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 the services that need to be provided to the citizens of Jacksonville are happening. Lou Turner, First Coast News. Hey, Mayor, so you mentioned hospitals remain in good shape, but not at capacity. Two-part question, if you can, do you have a number of what is capacity? Uh, for Jacksonville's hospitals, and of the 1,500 tests that you mentioned that have happened here, do we know um, of the positives, how many of those have been hospitalized? Uh, second part of the question, I, I don't know that data point at this point, but I'll, I'll ask, and uh, when I get it, I'll share with you what I have. Uh, I believe the first part of the question was um, about capacity of hospitals. That's correct. That yeah, right? uh, you mentioned uh, we're in good shape, not at capacity. Um, but but what is capacity, and, and is there a specific threshold that would force you to take even uh, greater action here in the city of Jacksonville? Yeah, I'm going to flip it to Chief Powers in a minute. But let me let me just say this. So here here is the what you have to monitor. While we have capacity right now, we're, what you've seen happen in other countries and is happening in New York is uh, so. The, the rate at which uh, admissions related to coronavirus, coron the coronavirus doubles. Uh, and uh, that's what we have to keep an eye on because if that starts to happen exponentially, that's when you have to, that's why we're setting up the field hospital, for example. Chief Powers, I'll let you uh, go in a little more detail there. Good morning. So as I said yesterday, we, we have data that comes in live to the the fire headquarters up in the EOC, and it it gives us the capacity of those hospitals and where they're at. But um, out of respect for those hospitals that share that information with us, we don't put that their information out. We would have to reach out to individual hospitals to ask about that. But I can tell you that we're we're not at, at capacity. Um, some hospitals have greater capacity than others, so it's a it's kind of an average that we look at. And I thank you, Chief. And I would add to that. I said it in my remarks. I think. What's, what's really important and is gonna be helpful as we go through this is that these hospital, their leaders are not looking at their own systems and saying, this is our capacity. They are communicating across lines to each other. So one hospital is not suddenly feeling all the stress while maybe another one or two are not. They're working together in a pretty special way. Bridget Matter. Yeah, I have a couple questions. Um, how will you know if the measures you're taking are working since the numbers are going to go up because there's more testing? That's question one. Um, and then question number two, how many complaints have you received um, against employers that might not be 
allowing employees to work from home? Uh, well, here's what we know in terms of the measures we're taking. Uh, human beings, people spread the virus, spread the disease. So uh, the social distancing, the working from home, uh, that's what works. And uh, anecdotally, it seems to me like uh, by and large, people in Jacksonville understand that and are listening to that. When I observe people uh, in a grocery store, for example, they seem to be distant, minding you know their distance of people. And so that ties back to the next question about the complaints. Um, we have, first of all, if people have a complaint, they should call 630 City. Uh, my team is now cataloging the plaints that have cut that have come in, uh, and some of them will warrant us looking at them and and engaging that employer. Uh, but again, not every complaint uh, is necessarily means that the employer is not, is not doing its part. As the example that I gave, there'll be there's more out there. Uh, if you complain that your job is to package and ship goods and you've asked to do that from home, you can't do that job function from home. So it's real important to clarity here. If the job duty can be performed at home, it should be. Ann Schindler, First Coast News. Mayor, uh, a couple of questions. One is if you can give me some um, numbers or ballpark as to how many people in the city, city employees, uh, sheriff's office employees have been tested or are quarantined at present um, because of concerns of exposure? And number two, are hospitals required to report to the Department of Health their figures when they have cases that are quarantined suspects or test positives? Like, do we know that the Department of Health numbers are reliably updated from area hospitals? Uh, first part of the question I'll take, and then I'll flip it to JSO in terms of if they have numbers and to Chief Powers on your question about the health department. Uh, I'm not aware of anybody uh, in my space, if you will, uh, in the mayor's office that ha that is self-quarantined or uh, has had to be tested. Uh, I've not been tested because I'm taking the advice that I'm giving people. I'm not aware of having been exposed to COVID-19 or anyone in my family being exposed. No one is symptomatic in my family. And we are practicing uh, the social distancing, uh, being isolated within our family and moving around only when we need to. Uh, in terms of city employees, uh, I'll, have to I'll have to ask that question to see you know, if at, at a larger scope of group, a larger population are, are in that category. Uh, Jacksonville Sheriff's Office, if you want to, uh, address if you guys have those numbers yet. And then Chief Powers, if you could address the last question on hospital sharing information with the Department of Health. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. This is Mike Bruno. I'm the Director for Patrol and Enforcement. Uh, the Jacksonville Sheriff's Office currently has around 25 employees that are currently offline due to uh, being impacted with the virus. None of them have tested positive, but they are all self-quarantined uh, due to either travel-related issues or uh, some uh, suspicious interaction with a uh, someone that's shown flu-like symptoms. Uh, and in that number, that also includes our correctional officers as well as our police officers. Chief Powers. Yes, sir, Mr. Mayor. On behalf of the Jacksonville Fire and Rescue Department, we've got 28 employees that um, are currently uh, quarantined due to the same reasons that uh, Director Bruno mentioned. Uh, we have no, no employees that have tested positive at this time. The health department is notified at, at lot J at the testing site at the Prime Osborne or in any hospitals. Once, once those tests go out, the testing companies notify the, the individual of their results and they also notify the health department of the results. So the health department is getting all uh, testing results uh, sent to them by the, the companies providing that testing. I would add there have been many first responders that have been tested and, and let me add, uh, I got asked the question yesterday, if, and I state it again, if you know somebody that is positive and you have been exposed to them, close to them, uh, and you have no symptoms, you should isolate for 14 days. Chris Hong, Christopher Hong, Florida Times Union. 
Can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. A question for Chief Powers. Um, is there a reason why the local hospitals do not want to share the figures about their bed capacity numbers? And the second part of that question would be, um, will the city start making that information available as the uh, capacity gets closer and closer to being full? Chris, I'm not aware Chief of Powers. whether hospitals want to release that information or not. I just know out of respect for them, they share that information with us and out of respect for each of the individual hospitals. We don't, you know, we're not sharing it, but it, it could, because it allows us here in the EOC to be aware of what's going on uh, in live time throughout the city. Christopher, I can tell you that if we were seeing, um, if we were seeing spikes in admissions, uh, you would be hearing from us. The public would need to know that uh, if we were getting to the point where uh, we saw a wave coming, if you will. Vic with WJXT. Hey, good morning, Mayor and city officials. Uh, thank you guys, first of all, for all the work here. I want to go back to the businesses that are still open that are getting these complaints. Uh, I have a list right now from the city hotline, the ethics hotline, as well as 630 city. And I can only imagine it's going to continue to grow. Who's actually enforcing it? Because mayor, I know that there are some strict penalties that you have uh, said could come into place here. Is this going to be a code enforcement thing? Is JFRD, the fire marshal going to get involved, possibly JSO, if this continues to escalate and people ignore your warnings? Well, the first thing we're going to do is catalog. There's some, this is be, these things are being cataloged right now and the de then determine on which of these cases need to be followed up on. Uh, and, and, and those that do, uh, if it's determined that, that they're not, that, that, employee, that an employee can work from home, employees can work from home and they're not, then um, the first step is to just encourage these people to be reasonable and follow the order. We don't want to end up in a place of condemnation. I don't want to have to do that. Um, it's a tool that could be used, uh, but the, the first step is catalog that's happening now and then follow up uh, as needed based on the information that we see in the complaint. Jim Pickett, JXT. Mayor, um, what are you hearing from the Navy and the other military folks here? Are they required to report to the city and the local health department uh, cases, suspected cases. Um, we're hearing different stories from viewers. I'll flip that to the fire chief here in a minute, but I will tell you that the, the phone call that we do, that I do with all of our hospital leaders, leadership includes, um, includes uh, the Navy. Uh, they're part of that discussion in collaboration. And chief, I'll let you take the question. Jim, I'm not, uh, I don't have the answer to that question, but I'll work on it for you and, and get you some information later today. Bridget Matter. So are there areas of town, this is actually a question for JSO, areas of town that seem to have less compliance when it comes to gatherings, has JSO had to break up any um, parties at like public parks? I know yesterday it was mentioned that crime is up 4% and that coronavirus really isn't um, deterring activity in the city. So, Bruno. so JSO still responds to the calls for service. And, and when we get there, we assess the situation and, and we'll take appropriate action. Um, you know, the, the mayor mentioned it before. Our, our goal is to spread the truth, not the virus. Um, so we get out there, we, we explain to them the, what we need them to do. And, and for the most part, we, we've gained compliance. There's been a few um, issues and such uh, that have, that have uh, sprinkled in along the way. But the reality of it is these businesses and these other places uh, where individuals are gathering, they need to take on the responsibility. Uh, if, if, the, if a business is allowing someone to gather up beyond um, what the orders are, then, then that business needs to, to step up and take responsibility and tell the individuals to disperse, um, to keep them safe as well as everyone else. So. All right, uh, again, thank you all for being a part of this and getting the information out to people. Uh, again, I wanna, I wanna ask folks to take care of themselves, take care of their families, their neighbors, 
make sure you're appropriately distancing and isolating to the extent you can. And at seven o'clock tonight, call somebody that you care about or someone that you haven't talked to in a while and listen to them and share with them. I'll be joining you in that. And share it on social media if you can. Thank you.